Hello and welcome to another tutorial from MoICT. Today's tutorial we're going to be covering how to do collision detection inside of WPF and C Sharp. Uh, let's just take a look at this project. So in this project I have a character that has landed on a platform. I can move it left and right. And then when I land on another platform, it also shows the information on the top about which platform it landed on. So we are able to interact and collide with multiple objects. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start on this project. First, make a new project. Click on new project here. Make sure you choose WPF app.net framework. Click next. Let's name this one Collision Detection Project WPF or ICT. Click create. Okay, so to begin, uh, let's go and change a few things. Inside the title, add Collision Detection Project. In the height to 600 with to 525. Let's change the grid to a canvas. So the canvas again, give it a name called My Canvas. Set focusable to true. Key down event to key is down set key up event okay and then inside of here let's go make a new label first name txt info font size set to 16 and then end this one and say landed on And do like a couple of question marks there. Okay, let's go make the first rectangle. Name player fill blue width let's say 50 height 50 and then let's end the tag. So once it's created we can just move it to the center over here. Okay. Let's go and make another rectangle. I'll give it a name of platform one. Fill, say purple. Give it a tag called platform. Okay, width, say 300. Height, 50. Then let's end the tag there. So once it's created, we can just move this one right here. So when it's been moved, just go to the line, press Ctrl D. That will duplicate the knowing for you. So change that one to platform two. Change the background to say orange. And then we can move that one to say over here. And then let's make another copy of this one. Call this one platform three. Give this one a color of aqua. And then we can move that platform right here. Okay, so we just want the player to be bouncing between these three platforms. Okay, so now let's go and add the key down and key up events. So if I right click on the keyword and say go to definition there, it will add it to the C sharp script. If I right click again to key is up and click on go to definition, that should add it to the C sharp script as well. Okay, so now let's go and import the namespace, threading namespace. Say so system windows dot threading. So namespaces are where most of the classes are organized and if we need to use something from those namespaces we can access them once we have mentioned it in here. Okay, so without it we won't be able to access the dispatcher timer. So now let's go here and find the dispatcher timer. Call it timer new dispatcher timer like so. Okay, so we need in speed and drop speed and two booleans okay so now let's set the timer and the canvas so we're going to set them up inside the main constructor this is going to load when the program actually loads so we're just going to make some space here and say my canvas dot focus so we just want out of all the elements we want the my canvas to be focused on when the game loads say timer dot tick plus equals 
main timer event is a timer the interval is equals time span of from milliseconds put that to 20 and then we'll start the timer okay so at the moment we haven't created the main timer event so let's go do that so if you just hover over it and click on the show potential fixes and then just click on the first one and that will create an empty timer event so we just need to delete that line we don't need that so let's set up the keys down and keys up event so let's say if the key key dot left then we go left is equals to true go right to true so now let's copy and paste that over here and then change them to false so when the keys are released we want to change them to false and when keys are pressed they'll be set to true okay, let's start with the main timer event so we want the player to be dropping down when the game loads so say canvas set top player and then we need to get the current top of player and then add the drop speed value to it okay so now let's move the player left and right So if go left is true and get left, the current position of the player is greater than zero inside the canvas, then we can move the player towards the left. So we can say, so we can say canvas dot get left again. So player minus speed. Okay, so that's basically taking uh, the current position of the player object and then reducing it from the value of the speed integer that we created earlier if we go here if go right is now equals equals true and canvas dot get left player again plus right, so say plus player width let's say 15 is less than application dot current dot main window dot width okay in that case we're just going to be moving it towards the right okay so now we need to find out if we if the player has basically dropped off the canvas so say canvas dot get top player plus player dot height say times two is greater than application dot current dot main window dot height this time then converse dot set top say player to say minus eighty okay so that way the player if the player has left the scene then it will be repositioned on top of the scene. So let's just give it a go and see what happens. So the player drops and then it comes back. So I can move left, I can also move right. Okay. That's fine. So now let's go to the collision detection for the player and the platforms. So we'll run A for each loop here. Save for bar x in my canvas dot children dot off type so we want a specific object to be scanned through and we just want to scan through all the rectangles that are available in this app so we can say if string so if there are any rectangles with the 
kind of the platform we can do the following with it so say x the stroke equals brushes dot black so we're just going to give it a nice little outline of black so in order to actually do the collision what we need to do we need to pass the values of the player and the platforms inside a rect structure a rect structure is basically a structure that holds the information of rectangles position height and width and this way we can use the rect structure's internal function called intersect to determine whether the two objects are colliding okay so let's make the first one the rect player hitbox equals new rect okay so inside of this one we can say canvas dot get left first for the player say canvas dot get top of the player so that's the x and the y value and then player dot width and then obviously player dot height okay I'm just going to copy this line here for now say make another one called platform hitbox equals so instead of player let's change them to x okay so we're just going to be making these new classes and we're going to relate them back to the player and the platform right because the platform is being identified by using the x tag here sorry the x variable so now what we can do is we can say if player hitbox dot intersect with okay platform hitbox okay if that happens then change drop speed to zero right and then canvas the set top of the player to x then minus player dot height okay so in this line we are setting the player's top position on the top position of the platform minus the height of the player so we will appear to be on top of the platform okay and then obviously we got txt info content equals to content on plus x dot name Okay, so if it lands on any of the platforms, we'll know which one the player has landed on. So we'll go to else. So if this condition isn't true, we still want the drop speed to be 10. Okay, so if you can run this now. So see we landed on the first one. Then we landed on the second one. Then we land on the third one and the label is updating there i can drop but then i can still move around okay so this has been a simple tutorial where we sort of looked into how to do collision detection between multiple objects inside of wpf i hope you guys enjoyed this one and i will see you on the next one